this video I'll go through some modifications we made after 50 nights and some things that were a waste of time and some things have actually gone wrong we've had to fix. Okay, we're just shy of 50 nights in, so let's give you a quick rundown on how well things have actually worked and what's gone wrong. Um, the layout actually works really well. Um, people did seem to suggest having the cab isolated wasn't a great idea, but in the real world it works brilliantly. With these curtains closed, uh, the thermal barrier between here and the cab is great, so it keeps it warm, the back warmer or cooler um, compared to the cab. Um, which works well. Um, the bed's comfortable and there's you know, basically loads of space to actually walk around, um, believe it or not. The corridor's quite wide and there's loads of room in the kitchen for cooking. One thing I did uh, cock up, in a sense, was the back bit of the bed, of the, uh, of the cushion here, um, comes across and makes the end of the bed. Now this was supposed to overlap um, by more than it does but actually what happens is this cushion can move slightly across whereas this the whole point of this was to stop it moving um, so there is you can see it should um, but just because of the angle it sort of slips off so ideally that should have been made a few centimeters wider when we built the van I spent ages designing the lounge so that we could have it with a u-shaped layout so we have a panel that comes across here and fits into there um, which is used for the bed um, and we put a cushion on to make a U-shaped lounge. Um, we've used that precisely once and that was just to make sure it worked. Um, hasn't been as usable as we expected. What we have found is we basically sit on that uh, cushion there, we just take these back ones off and just we can both get our feet up on the side here, um, which is a little bit odd, but there we go. One of the problems we've got is if we look on the material here, we've got some black marks. Um, and here and here and at first glance it looks like mould um, so we were like oh here we go um, something's leaking um, but it's not it's not actually leaking at all now what we've put it down to is if you feel it it's, it's, it's a bit tacky and uh, we think it's the um, the glue that we use to glue the fabric um, to the leatherette to the ply and we just think as it's got hot it's leaching through the material and then just um, either attracting dust or that's the natural colour. So if we clean it with some white spirit it cleans up a little bit um, but um, yeah it looks doesn't look great you might need to do something about that longer term. One thing we did we didn't really think about is here we've got the water switches the water system uh, absolutely fine works brilliantly but when we sit on this seat your head and you, you know you sort of lean on the unit with your head if you fall asleep Mel you end up leaning on the switches um, I didn't consider that in the build at all and annoyingly there's room here um, where we could have put them quite nicely so that was a um, bit of a design overview um, oversight um, we've got lots of lights and what I would say these lights are absolutely perfect um, low power but incredibly bright um, then we've got all the lights under the units We've got uh, lights under here uh, and everywhere else. We haven't really used them as much as we expected. Literally, we just use the top level lights. Um, same as the lighting board. Um, you know, it's very nice to look at. It's very bling. It, it, you know, it leaves a nice um, image, um, ni nice lighting effects. You know, the engineering to get that in was immense. Um, not sure it was worth it. Uh, I mean, I like it, but again, we don't really use it that much. The projector we have for movies is actually pretty good. Um, it just clips under there and then projects the screen um, which basically sticks on the back here and uses the Bluetooth um, speakers here for the audio. So the cinema experience is actually really good. So when we put this in, we designed in power up here uh, for the projector. And again, brilliant. Um, but I didn't consider the HDMI. So there's a HDMI socket around the other side um, where do we put the laptop? Um, so, you know, it can't really fit on the shelf. There's not quite enough room um, because uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not enough room. So we've actually got to put the laptop over here, um, which basically means we've got to string a cable up over the door down to here. 
So if you're going to do a projector, think about that. Because um, what we could have done is just put uh, an HDMI socket here and run the cable through the ceiling and had a, a port underneath here or, um, or here to allow the projector to go without cables all over the van. Um, yeah, so it works fine, but just it's a bit crap when you've got cables running over the place. The bathroom, I would have to say, I would rate it 10 out of 10. The size is perfect and it does really does work really, really well. We made some slight mods on the, on the curtain rail um, just by um, putting some pegs on. So when we've got wet towels, we can drape it across. Now I would say 10 out of 10, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to deduct some points because um, I'm, there's something I didn't think about. And if I heard about it, I probably wouldn't have believed it anyway. Um, so let this be a lesson to you guys. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's a bit of a, a little bit of a bump here. Um, I can't really see it, I can just about feel it. Um, maybe you can see in the shadows there. Now, what actually happened is this wall was the first one I put up. And for waterproofness, I uh, made sure it was tight at both sides. And I fitted it in um, November or December, I think it was November. So you know where this is going. When I fitted it, it was about you know, five degrees outside. So in the heat, um, when all the doors were closed um, and the sun was on the side, it got to about 35, 40 degrees. Now, this PVC is fantastic. It's it's hasn't marked, um, it's lived long, it's better than I expected, to be honest, in usage, but it expands one mil per 20 degrees per meter. So you've got a meter distance, so it's basically expands um, about two mil since when I installed it. And what that means is because both ends are right in the corner, um, this this bit here has actually popped out. So when it's got really warm, there's a bit of a bulge here. And you know, you, you can just push it and it's basically popped away from the adhesive behind. Um, it's not a lot I can do about that at the moment. And when I posted on the forum, um, there's at least three other people I'm aware of that have suffered from this, all fitted around the winter time. So if you are going to use this, um, think about the expansion. Um, I could have left you know, a millimetre and a half either side and just put a bit more sealant or glue down, whereas I was really quite pedantic and made it fit perfectly against the edges. Um, that was a balls up in hindsight, I should have left expansion gap. The size, the other side have all been absolutely fine. It literally is just this, because this is the first one in, tied up against both spaces. And behind here, there's at least 50, probably 70 mil of insulation. So, you know, it's not getting the full heat, but obviously too much. Okay, so let that be a lesson to you guys. Give expansion gaps a consideration. Capacity wise, the van has 70 litres of water on board and an extra 10 in a container in the garage which we can use to top up. The 70 litres is enough for four showers, uh, washing up and cooking and everything else, so it easily lasts four or five days. Uh, the waste is 60 litres and again that takes all the waste for, for the duration without any problem at all. The toilet cassette I think is 18 litres um, and that lasts four days just. Um, so we might need to get another cassette um, to carry if we're going to do long wild camping trips just so we can um, go away for more than four days if we need to. The fridge is working really well um, but we did find when it was really hot that the beer wasn't uh, really cold which is sacrilege so we've made some changes to the fridge. I don't know if you guys can see uh, but the floor is starting to get a bit of a blue tinge in places where this gets picked up by the camera or not I don't know. Now this is uh, Ultra um, Lino, so it's not, not cheap and it's supposed to be pretty good. Um, but the adhesive we used is the Lino um, uh, high temp adhesive from Tool Station, uh, which is blue. So we used this in the first van and that's been absolutely fine, so hence we used it here. But we can see these blue marks coming through. So something's telling me the um, the glue might be leaching through the colour but it didn't happen on the last fan and it's not consistent so not exactly sure what's going on um, but something uh, looks a bit amiss if it gets worse um, we'll just have to get some carpet down on top of it again nothing we can do about it at last we've actually finished lining the garage as much as we're going to so we've got these sort of panels on anywhere that was single skin so that's basically just three mil ply with the vinyl on so that the whole thing is now covered 
Um, it's really just to stop knocking. There's no real insulation on the sides because um, again you can't insulate the door and the quarter panel without much much hassle. It literally is just to stop it getting. You know, if I knock it with the bike, is to stop it um, damaging the outside of the van. So that's as neat as it's going to get. Obviously, you've got a garage light in there. Under the top, you've got another thermostatic controller um, with an on-off switch. What that means is, um, if the garage gets too hot, again, it's, there's not much insulation in it, and it's a black van, and the fridge is venting into the back. It means you've got a big fan here and um, a vent on the outside. Um, so the you know, the hot air from the garage will just be vented out externally. Um, this fan is absolutely awesome. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, statistics are, but literally, I'm sure if I turned it on when driving, we go a bit faster. Um, so hence, we had to just put a speed controller um, on the fan just to make it you know, to balance the noise versus um, the power. So that's the garage finished. It's a bit of a mess. Um, we, we, we're not set up to go away today. Um, but then, yeah, there's room for the chairs there. Um, lots of ramps. We've got uh, the outside table leg. Um, but obviously we can get the two bikes in here, the sunscreens and, and everything else. Um, just needs tidying up. One of the upgrades we planned from the beginning was to install refillable gas. So we've got a gasset um, refillable part there. And in the back on the gas locker, um, it comes in behind this box section here and there's a pipe that goes down into the gas locker. Uh, that's obviously booted, so uh, any gas leak will go straight into the gas locker. We can see the gas locker is now fairly tight, um, and getting the door off you can see there's going to be a bit of a challenge, and to get the uh, gas bottle out. So this is why the back of the toilet cassette um, is boxed in and there's a split here. This whole section uh, removes, so we can take the front of the locker off and get the gas bottle off. But what it does mean is we can just open the um, small flap and then inside here we have the refillable gas system. So we can see the um, refillable pipe coming into here which is the thermoplastic into the bottle and then there's the um, tap we can reach um, which goes into the regulator uh, and then round the back we've got the all the leak detector and then there's a manifold around the corner. The bottle does have a float gauge. Um, I'll see if I can. Yeah. Sorry for the wonky angle. But we've got a mirror there on the side, so we can actually see it because obviously the bottle's round the wrong way. It's the joys of being a very tight um, layout. Um, but uh, that's you know, at least we can see it. But underneath the bottle, we have a Bluetooth ultrasonic. Uh, transmitter so we get an app on the phone and tell us exactly how much gas is in there but this new flap just means we can seal it and open it without actually taking the whole front off to make it a bit more accessible on the back we've now got a um, hose pipe connection so this is for an outside shower um, so that's basically just for washing feet and the rest of it after 60 nights away the van is actually finished but there are some um, future mods we are going to be considering. One of which is replacing the batteries. Um, we've currently got two 110 um, lead acid batteries under here, giving us obviously about 110 usable, um, which is absolutely fine. We've got 300 watt of solar and that should be fine to keep everything running um, even over winter. The problem is that never took into account um, that Mel still needs an e-bike um, because of an ongoing foot injury. So unless that gets fixed in before winter, which is unlikely, uh, we're going to have to still need to charge up her battery over winter. Now obviously over winter we may be on hookup, so it should be fine. Otherwise this will take out 30 amp hours from the leisure batteries. We've got an efficient 12 volt dedicated charger for it, but obviously when we take out 30 amp hours we may not necessarily get that back in. So it is possible to get a 200 amp hour um, lithium ion battery under here. Um, with a BMS which might work. The other mod we might be doing is in here obviously we've got the toy cassette and the blue chemical. We might, um, we're going to test it shortly, but we might put in a SOG type system to suck air out of the cassette um, and vent it externally through a charcoal filter which apparently stops the need for chemical. Time will tell whether that's going to work or not but um, that's just something on the project list. 
And the other mod is we're going to be putting in some um, steel plates in the doors to um, prevent screwdriver type attacks. Hopefully some of the comments um, and faults I've highlighted will make your builds a bit easier. And if you can learn from me and not make the same mistakes, then happy days. Best wishes guys, and most of all, use your vans. Enjoy. Bye.